All right. Happy New Year, everybody. It's Kate Richberg and welcome to Bead Shop Live for Wednesday, January 3rd. I had to make a new intro for this fanciness, right? So here we are, ready to tackle master class for laddering. Let me take a bracing drink of my coffee. So many of you are on here watching. Thank you so much for joining me. We're broadcasting on a bunch of different channels today um, all over the web. So I wanted to just jump in and say, let me add this to the stage so I can throw this um, screen up and say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, friends, to hit that there we go. Like, subscribe, notification if you're watching us live on YouTube or on replay. You can find us all over the web at beadshop.com. Go to our Facebook page and join us over there, our Facebook group called The Bead Table. Lots of great stuff. You folks are really just killing it for the new year over there. And if you have any questions, don't forget to email us right there it is, at info at beadshop.com. Check your spam folders, kids, because if you don't get a reply from us, it means it went in your spam or your junk folder because Drea always answers. So there's that. Um, all right, my friends. So let's get into it today. What we're going to do, it's our new masterclass for the first half of 2024. Um, we're going to delve into ladder bracelets. Now, laddering is definitely an art. Um, there's lots of things. Even if you're a seasoned ladder bracelet maker and designer, I hope that you'll pull some really good tips and tricks out of this series. Um, this series is going to run the first Wednesday of the month through June 2024. Actually, the June broadcast is going to be a little bit later in June, but check our newsletters, uh, our beadshop.com newsletters. So you'll be up to date when, uh, when the uh, new episodes drop every first Wednesday. And don't forget, you can check out a playlist after this premiere, uh, episode one broadcasts will throw this into a playlist, um, for the laddering bracelets masterclass, and you'll be able to find them all there. Uh, we just finished up, uh, end of last year, the masterclass on, uh, big necklace making my advanced stringing techniques. That's all complete over on that playlist. So give that a watch as well. It was a lot of fun. Speaking of that big advanced stringing necklace, I hope you can join me. Uh, I think it's tomorrow, actually. I'm jumping on a live broadcast with my buddy, Jen Cushman. We're going to talk a little bit about our upcoming retreat in France uh, at the end of May, beginning of June of this year. There's still a couple of spots remaining, and I really want to take you with me so you can learn a little bit more about it. We make it so easy for you to join us. So I'd love to have you come with me. So check the newsletter, the exact time, but I think it's going to be a uh, regular, my regular broadcast time at 1030 AM Pacific, but there'll be more info about that in the newsletter tomorrow. Um, okay. So what are we going to get into today? Let me tell you, we're going to talk uh, about all the beginning stuff you need to know. The method, traditional versus infinity stitch, which threads to choose 
doubling your threads or not doubling your threads, what beads work with which technique, and using some alternate thread choices. Okay, so uh, let me see who's here. And if you have any questions, um, I'm just going through all of these, uh, all of these comments here. It's great to have you all here. My gosh, so many people are watching. 200 of you are watching with me uh, this morning. I love it. Mary, thank you. Yes, love the music and intro. Thank you. Let's ladder. Let's do it, my friends. Let's ladder. So let me first start out uh, by letting you know. So when I came back to Bead Shop in 2016, after, you know, a hiatus of running around the bead world, doing a lot of other things, came back to my bead shop home. Um, ladder bracelets were kind of a thing, right? Uh, bead shop was kind of known for laddering and stuff. And I, to be perfectly honest, had never made a ladder bracelet before in my life. Um, but I was really intrigued by it, right? So I jumped on the laddering bandwagon and started making ladder bracelets and really loved it, loved it. And, um, so I started by starting at the beginning, the stuff that Janice put out at the beginning with tricks to laddering. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to show you where that is. So Cindy laddering is what you brought you to beach up in the first place back in 2009, right? I love it. We've been laddering for forever. And is it Jan's birthday? Happy birthday, Jan. I'm sorry. I missed that. All right. Um, Melanie, I don't know what infinity tool you're talking about, but, uh, email us over at info to let me know what it is. Um, I'm just using these, these tools and a needle, but, um, yeah, let me know what that is. I always like to know about new, uh, a new tools. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. So bear with me here just a second while I, um, pull that up and I'll show you how to navigate to it. Um, bear with me here. Let me add my uh, screen. Ah, technology. Isn't it amazing how we can just with the press of a button share things out. Okay. So here we go. We're on the homepage of beadshop.com. You can see the January monthly mix is out called Sorbet Punch. Uh, great uh, the tile beads great for laddering. Um, but let me navigate over and I'm going to show you, let's go into projects. Let's go under bracelets. Okay. And we're going to scroll down here, uh, to tricks to laddering. You can see we've got so many variations on the ladder bracelet here. But I'm scrolling down just to show you. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And here we are. So I'm just going to choose one. I'm going to scroll down a little um, further on down here. Let's go to this one. It's called Sage. This is one of our most popular ones right here. Now, the handout is what you're looking for. Let me click on that. I'm going to share this tab here so you can see it. Let me make sure it's up. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, let me show you. This is Janice's like magnum opus on, um, on laddering. Okay. And you can see the evolution here, 2010, 2012, 2015. I've got that 2012 bracelet here. We're actually going to look at it, um, and see how it stand, uh, stood the test of time. So you can see Janice wrote this uh, handout back in 2015. Just seems like yesterday, doesn't it? But she talks a lot about threads. Um, you know, there's a lot of really great sage advice in here. Number one being the smaller the beads, the more thread you use. Can you see that? 
that comparison there. Um, there's just lots of tips and techniques in here, which is just great. So if you have not downloaded this one yet, my friends, uh, go ahead and download it. Uh, a lot of actually what I'm going to talk about and beyond is covered in this tricks to laddering. I also wanted to show you, um, this one here. Let me go back to, uh, <laughs> Janice Sage is the color, not you, but you are a sage. There's nothing wrong about being a sage with being a sage. I'll tell you what, you know what I'm saying? So, um, let me go back to, I'm going to share this page again, because there's something else I want to show you here as we start up. Uh, I want this. Let's navigate over my friends to the color study project. Now color study of which Hydria was one of them. Color study is kind of an amazing foray into, uh, wrap bracelets and, um, what do I want to say? Techniques, texture, using different beads, all that kind of stuff. Um, the original color study, this is one of them, charcoal that Janice did. There is um, the color study handout. I just clicked on it. I want to share that with you so you can see it and make sure it's up. It is. Um, so go to these, uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, you can find these handouts on each of the project pages. So you can find, um, these project pages in, uh, there's a little button that says handout with all of the, uh, whoops, that's the tricks to laddering. Here we go. There's the color study one. Is that one on? Let me make sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was confused. I'm going to close this other tab so I'm not confused. But this, Janice talks about the color study, about um, the laddering, about gluing, about all this stuff. She uses Tough Cord in this project. Unfortunately, Tough Cord really isn't available to us anymore. Um, but you can substitute Ceylon. We're going to talk about Ceylon there. So this is another great, great resource for you. So write this down. You want to jump in on the color study handout and the tricks to laddering handout. Let me show you, uh, one more over here. Let me stop sharing this one. Let me go here. We're a wealth, we're a font of knowledge. I'm going to share my screen once again. Uh, here we go. Let's go back to that. Okay. Uh, let's go to our skill builders. There's two more things I'm going to share with you. Our skill builders. Many of you know this, and you know I talk about skill builders all the time in my broadcasts. But these are here to teach you these basics, right? So if you need a quick refresher, it's right here. First, how to secure a project to a project tray. That's vital for um, for, uh, wrap bracelets, um, the infinity stitch, the how to ladder, how to add a thread. You know, I don't even know why I'm teaching this masterclass. It's all here in skill builders, but we're going to dive into it. The other thing I want to show you are this guy here, the stitchinary. Um, <coughs> pardon me. We've added some threads since this was made. We've discontinued some threads since this was made, like the tough cord. But if you scroll around here, you can take a look and you can see um, all of the different, um, we've got the Ceylons, we've got the silk. So we've tried to keep this updated uh, with some of the new stuff that we have, that we've gotten. Okay. 
sorry, my, my plug is, it's giving me a warning here. Let me see. There we go. Bear with me here just a second. I don't want to lose the, the broadcast here. Bear with me here while I just bring this cord around. There we go. We're good to go. Um, uh, hold the phone here. Hold that phone. Let me put it over here and let me do this. You folks keep looking at that. And hopefully we will get this going. Okay. Sorry, of course, there's a little bit of a, um, a glitch. Of course, there always is, right? Uh, and it looks like it is charging. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Whew. All right, we're in good shape. Um, do you do that when you you play a battery chicken with your device? I always try and remember to plug it in at the beginning, but sometimes I don't. So thank you, Matt, for telling me. Um, all right, let me get back to uh, to this important stuff. So lots of threads, lots of stuff on the stitchinary. Let me show you one more thing. And it's great to uh, see that so many of you use this. There's one more uh, that I want to show you here. This Needlepedia, the basics of needles, which I'm also going to go over a little bit today. But this is such a, uh, a great resource. So there are some of the resources that you uh, you can tap into on our website at beadshop.com. Okay, so let's take a look. Let me get rid of this. Oh, and Janice wanted me to show uh, the lookbook collection. I will. You know, thanks, JP, for reminding me. You know, I actually looked at the lookbooks myself the other day for inspiration. <laughs> Sometimes I forget them. How could I? How, how could it be that I would forget those? Uh, bear with me here just a second. Let me share this page. Uh, there we go. Share here. And let's take a look. The um, lookbooks are here under projects. Now, our design team, former design team, Allie was in it, Faye was in it, Kim was in it, so many of you. Um, uh, 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 um, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. Um, on who else it'll, it'll come to me. Danielle Wicks, Danielle in there. Um, you folks did such amazing work on these. And also this, this uh, they're all so good. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Click on them. Take a look. This year of monthly mix wrap bracelets, there's a broadcast that Allie and I did. Allie did a wrap bracelet, not just like a little tiny wrap bracelet, but just a major wrap for every month. They're just incredible. I It takes my breath away again when I look at these. This is a fantastic resource for you to look at. Um, there are so many, uh, so many here in the lookbook world. So uh, take a look at all of these. There's a lot have to do with wrap bracelets. Some just are just a melange of different pieces. So don't forget about those. Hopefully that uh, will, um, will, uh, I'm just looking at all these. We'll remind you to take a look at those. They're really, really great. Okay. So let me remove this. So let's take a look at my friends. Let's get into it. Let's um, talk about, again, what we want to cover in this first session. Okay. Let's look at some bracelets that are done with the traditional um, stitch, the traditional laddering stitch. Uh, stitch from the left and the right versus infinity stitch, which is a thread that just comes from one side, either the left or the right. 
We're also going to talk a little bit about which threads to choose for those methods, and then doubling threads, what beads work, and then we'll hit on some alternate thread choices. So let me start by, uh, I'm going to spotlight my screen here. And uh, folks, ask questions, ask away, okay? So if you have, uh, if you have questions, um, uh, put them in the chat. If I don't answer them right away, I'll get to them before we wrap up this episode. Okay. Now in the five more episodes that are coming, I'm going to cover like a whole bunch of stuff. Um, measuring, we're going to do one, uh, just on regular lighting, one on just infinity, how to measure, how to close all of that. Okay. So this is just episode one. So you're going to have to hang in there, my friends, uh, as, as I go through this. Okay. So let's take a look. Oh, you can see my order. See, I have to order just like you folks. There's my, there's my receipt. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um, okay. I'm going to take a look first though. I do have all of these needles and stuff here. I'm going to push these to the side for a second. And I want to look at the wrap bracelets. Now I have a whole tray full here. So I'm going to put these to the side and we're going to, we're going to talk about these. Then, uh, and we're going to examine these and see how they're made. These are all projects that are on the website that uh, we may or may not have the products for them any longer right? Um, it's just, it's just how it is, right? Let me zoom out just a little bit here. Bear with me here just a second. Let me get my water out of the way. There we are. Okay. So this is that one. Remember in that, that, uh, handout I showed you that wrap bracelet from 2012, right? That was this one. It's a simple one, but this is one of these that I think, uh, is just a classic. And so when you don't know what to make, right. Or you're having trouble, um, deciding what it is you want to make or whatever, a simple wrap like this, this I believe is in infinity stitch. Um, I'm guessing that it is infinite in infinity stitch. And it's just one long, simple strand or of, you know, no transition, no starting and stopping, just a long piece, a simple closure that's knotted opening for the button and then knotted. Let me show you how this is put together here. This is a little bead, a little flower bead. Can you see this? Anything could be a button. You know, this is just a little flower button that has a hole through the middle. There's a little seed bead here. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Um, it has a little seed bead here at the end to hold the head pin closed. Head pin comes through and then it's wire wrapped. Okay. Then the thread just starts. You bring the thread around. There isn't even a knot here, right? You just find the midpoint, you put the thread through and you know what? I lied to you. This is not infinity stitch. This is traditional laddering. This is done with KO. One thread is going through from the left to the right and the other thread is going from the right to the left. And the reason that I know that is, is that I can see this thread up here. There's no knot or anything. The thread just starts, comes out to the side like this, and then the laddering is that traditional laddering. So when I say laddering or ladder bracelets, what I'm going, what that refers to is kind of the umbrella of all bracelets with beads sandwiched in between two pieces of material, usually leather, could be something else, 
usually leather that's stitched around. That's what I would refer to as a laddering bracelet. I will say traditional laddering when we use a two um, thread method going from the left and the right. And I'll say infinity stitch when we just use one thread and we go from the left and the right and back like a figure eight, um, or we go from the right to the left. Either way, there's no wrong way there. Okay. So this looks like it is a one, two, three, four wrap, I think. And just beautiful little beads, single beads here, semi-precious, looks like some quartz, some seed beads, some um, peridot, and some smoky quartz here. Could not be easier, right? You find a bead to wire wrap for the button, and that's all she wrote. This could not be easier. I took a nod from this. This is the one that you see me wear all the time. And this is, I, I made this, I think, probably in 2016, I'm guessing. I wear this all the time. It is much the worse for wear, um, but it's still holding up two millimeter. Again, this same, um, just this same simple wrap from all the way down. And I think this wraps around mine. This is my own personal one. Some of you are, are mentioning using my coin buttons. Thank you for that. This one has one of the coin buttons I made on it. You can see this is just a three wrap. So if you're just starting out with ladder bracelets, my friends, you, you can just do one simple bead, right? That's all right. Um, you don't have to do anything super fancy right? It could just be one uh, finished thing and just ladder it through. This is one I did with infinity. Okay. So super, super simple. This could not be simpler. This is distressed gray, but has gotten more distressed and more dark gray <laughs> over the years that I've worn it. Um, but let's take a look at some others that I've just pulled out here. We're going to look at some pieces that are traditionally laddered. Let me go uh, pull this out just a little so you can see this. Um, this is also a good one. I'm just going to stack these up and then we're going to, we'll, uh, we'll look at them. A lot of these are pieces that were made before I arrived back at bead shop. So they're way, way uh, in our archives, you'll see pieces that we are components and stuff that we no longer carry. Um, some favorites, uh, there, and I'm sorry, I don't have everything that, uh, everything memorized that's in all of these, but you'll, you'll forgive me for that. Okay. So these are all bracelets down here that are, again, traditionally ladder, with the traditional ladder stitch. So what I mean by that is here's your, your side leather like this, right? Your side leather and your side leather like that, right? And here's your channel, okay? Now here's your beads that go in, okay, like so. And your threads come from the right and the left and cross between the beads. Okay? And here. Like that. Okay? Usually with traditional laddering, you need to... Um, really take into consideration the thickness of your threads and really pay attention to the size of the thread versus the beads that you are using. For instance, let me show you this one. This is the His Hers BFF project, which I love. The idea is you make three bracelets, one for you, one for uh, your significant other, and one for your best friend or for your two significant others 
and you or your three best friends or whatever. However you want to work this uh, bracelet trio, it's up to you. No judgment here. So this one is done with six odds. Okay. It's the, it's the seed bead here, the six odd seed bead. And we've used regular Ceylon. And the regular Ceylon is nice and thick. It's really thread forward here on the side, right? Um, and the holes in these six aughts are so large that you can get away with using the regular Ceylon with no problem. Okay. So if you're doing something like this where all of the holes are very, very similar and the holes are large, regular Ceylon, great choice for traditional lathering. Okay. If you are using some beads, let's say, that are also, there's some seed beads, but these are size eights this time. Okay. And some checkmates tiles. This is also traditional laddering. And Becky uh, observed that this is just like um, uh, lacing up your shoes, right? Very similar, right? You go the, the bead, you go through the bead instead of the grommets, but it's really very, very similar. Here, the regular Ceylon, the whole sizes maybe of these Checkmates tiles might accommodate it. Um, maybe the A dots might accommodate it, but you've got smaller holes here. Okay. Like this. So this is the regular. This is the fine Ceylon that I'm doing here. I could use fine for this one, right? It would be strong enough, but I think that the regular Ceylon makes it the thread really an integral part of this design. Okay. This one with the tiles, the regular Ceylon might be a bit big. Okay. So the, the, the fine Ceylon is a good choice for this. And you can see, again, this is just one long string of consciousness. You can see it goes around like this. And it's just, it's again, very simply the tiles. This is our mosaic. I think this is under the mosaic bracelets, right? Really good. Okay, so uh, this is a good one. Uh, let's look at another one that is, I think this is micro. Let me look. Let me, I've got some micro here. Let me hold it up against it. I believe this is micro right here. And I would guess that it would be because we're using semi-precious beads in this one. Holes are even a little smaller, right? So again, no way crossing over a doubled strand of the regular Ceylon, no way that would work. Crossing over fine through this hole, maybe you'd have to test it, okay? It would definitely go through the size eights, but probably not these. Uh, six millimeter rounds. So this way you'd pop down to the micro Ceylon here. And you can see this one has um, some transition spots in here. So the, the wrap goes down and then comes back up. Okay. And you can see here, um, it's all laddered, traditional laddering from the right and the left um, this away. Okay, traditional lettering. Um, also very pretty, lots of different beads. We'll get into measuring and how to make your bracelet line up or not in future episodes. But I, uh, I just want to show you bracelets that have different threads in them for right now. Let's take a look at another traditionally laddered piece here. Can you see this is with six millimeter fire polish, six millimeter fire polish. And you can see if I hold it like this, maybe even if I put this piece of white paper behind it, can you see how much 
um, air there is between these beads, right? So tension is always something with, uh, especially the larger your beads get, sometimes it's a little rough to keep the tension nice and straight, right? So um, the traditional laddering with, I think this is micro again, it could be fine because the holes in this fire polish are actually pretty big. Um, and this is all six millimeter fire polish, right? All of it. So again, a single bead, just like this one, you can choose a thread, whatever uh, fits through the nicest or the largest thread you can get through this and just go for it and ladder. Okay. This is just a single six aught, nothing, uh, nothing fancy about it, but I really like the way that it looks. I usually equate laddering with using tiny little beads, right? I need to break out of that, um, out of that mindset because look at how nice these six mils look here. It lends a little bit of opulence to the piece. I also wanted to point out the threads that we're using here. This is a thread that really, um, blends into the leather. Can you see that? This one here, this is a thread, this is a gold thread. So this is a thread that contrasts a little bit more. So this is something else, especially when you're doing traditional laddering, the thread is usually a little bit bigger, so it shows a little bit more. Um, so that's a decision you wanna make, okay? Especially also if you were doing this BFF one, um, we're using the largest Ceylon that we carry, the, the regular Ceylon, right? Um, the thread is really thread forward. Um, Andy's asking, and this is a good question, um, are you doing that with a needle on each side or did you just glue the thread ends? Most of the time when I'm doing traditional laddering, I glue those thread ends, okay, uh, on, on both sides. So it stiffens the, the needle. And I'm going to show you that in the upcoming two episodes that I'm doing, I'm devoting one whole episode to traditional ladder, laddering techniques and one whole episode to infinity stitch techniques. And we're going to talk about using needles, not using needles, etc. But it really, the, the answer to that, and Janice said, said it too, right? Um, it, it depends 100%. It depends, right? Um, it depends on the hole sizes. It depends on if the holes are just a little small and they need that extra, um, oomph to get the thread through, but we'll, we'll examine that. I promise in future shows. Um, let me show you this one here. This is one, I think Drea did this one. I think she did. Um, this is with regular Ceylon and ADOTs. You can see this regular Ceylon um, actually does work beautifully for this. And look at how, again, the uh, contrast between this green thread and the purple leather, just really good. Um, then we've done some macrame. We're going to examine macrame and stuff further on down in this series. This is one here where, uh, this is with the regular Ceylon here and this, um, regular laddering from the left and the right. This one here, I believe is infinity stitch. And can you see, I, I know that because, let me see if I can focus this. I know this because, um, can you see how the threads are doubled here on the side? Usually that's a dead giveaway that um, I've doubled over a thread through the eye of the needle and I'm going back and forth. So you actually have four threads pass through this because two threads are going when you go to the right and two threads are coming back through those holes when you're going to the left. Okay. So, um, so you can certainly mix your techniques into one bracelet. Okay. Here's a, a little more macrame. Here's that, um, uh, another macrame stitch, which looks really nice. And then again, finished up with these little 
<laughs> my mom was saying a, a snowshoe shape. Yes, it's true. Or a leaf shape. Really nice. Okay. And again, a nice closure here for the button. Um, let's get this. Uh, let's get that focused. Uh, let me show you this last guy here. And then we're going to look at some pieces that are uh, infinity stitched. Here's another one that has some macrame mixed into it. I'm sorry, I don't know who made this one. Um, this might have been a Drea piece. I can't remember, or it might have been one of our design team. Um, but really pretty. Four millimeters, really great with the regular, uh, the fine Ceylon. This was done to ladder with the fine. Um, fine here, then with the uh, regular Ceylon here, and then back to the fine. So Ceylon is great for the traditional lap, okay? And I've got some Ceylon right here. Let me just show this to you before we get any further. Here's that Ceylon, and you can look at it more in the stitchinary, but we've got the regular sitting right here, We've got the fine, I've got two of these fine here, and I've got the micro here. Um, now this is a good question, Cara. Do I cut really one long thread or do I add thread to do ladder stitch? I try and change out my threads if it's at all possible um, at the beginning and at the ending of a... Um, of a piece if it's not too long. Okay. Like this section here, I could probably get away with just having my thread be the correct length, right? Something like this, this one, uh, where did it go? This one, right? That's all one long piece like this. You're going to have to add thread. We're going to do a whole show on adding thread, taking away thread, changing thread, etc. Okay. So again, the answer is it depends. If it's a short section, you can probably get away with that and then add more thread in the transition. Here, this long one, that's just one long piece. You're going to have to have to add thread. Okay. Now there's a question also about doubled thread. Okay. Does the thread always need to be doubled or does it depend on what kind of thread is used? You're new to laddering. Well, welcome Bonnie with being new to laddering again. <laughs> Christine, it does. It all depends, right? So let me tell you, uh, let me put your question uh, back up here. I think the the answer to all of these, right, is it depends. You really have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. So here with these tiny little beads, okay, if I'm doing traditional laddering and going from the right and the left and the threads are just crossing underneath like this, right, you'll have a doubled thread through the hole, right? So the thread will be doubled through the hole but singly around the side here, like this, right? Same thing with all of these traditionally laddered pieces. This one here, this Kate's favorite, and the one that I'm wearing here, especially since this has a lot of metal beads on it, right? I chose Infinity Stitch for this one because I wanted my thread to be doubled, not only crossing under the bead through the bead hole, I wanted it to be doubled around the side of the leather so it would be super sturdy. Okay. That is why probably I would say 90% of the time I infinity. Sometimes when I really want the thread to be part of the design, I'll do the traditional laddering. But this thread that's going under, since it's doubled, it passes through the thread one way, through the bead hole rather than one way back through the bead hole the other way. So there's four strands going through here. And with these metal beads, having that little extra um, bit of thread in there. So if one starts to fray, um, the whole bracelet isn't going to go south. 
if that makes sense. I hope that I hope that helps. Um, let me scroll down and see if there's any. Yeah, Eslon, Jan, great question. Eslon, Ceylon, um, all of it, it, it can all be used. Very, very similar um, in feel. Um, so let's take a look. So we've looked at these. Here's the here's the scene lots for that. Let's look at infinity and some ideas for infinity. Oh, before before I do this one, this one might have been Kim's Kim Golias. I don't know if you're watching. This might have been your piece. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I should. Um, but this is a gorgeous, um, kind of pictorial wrap that has the birds. This is all about the beach, sand dunes and stuff. Really gorgeous. Um, again, with their traditional laddering and look at this closure. Look at that, how this has the macrame coming around and we do the, the macrame around the buttonhole rather than leaving just the um uh just the the thread you know the the leather exposed you can see in mine this one um here again the leather is just exposed i wear this all the time this certainly has uh stretched over the years but you could do something like this in macrame over it like that this is one of Allie's. okay is this an alley piece. I, I, it all runs together in my head, all of you wonderful bra bracelet designers. Um, oh, right. This is Allie's based on Claire's, right? One of Claire's paintings. That's right. Thank you, Kim, for reminding me. Really gorgeous. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Um, okay. Let's look at some infinity. Let me take this one down. This is uh, Kate's favorite Mach 2, I think. Um, this is one where I wanted to be a little fancier with the infinity. And so I'll go back here to Kate's favorite. This is simply, I did a, a silk wrap on this here. Silk wrap, silk wrap, silk wrap. And then I started doing the infinity stitch with this. And this is all um, just one long line. Um, Stephanie, really great question right here. There aren't any kits for these. If you go right onto beadshop.com, we've got materials lists, right? You can look at all of the ingredients, purchase the ingredients you need, as well as substituting any ingredients that you might already have. So they're all, um, they're all on there. Okay. Once in a while we do a kit, but we haven't done a wrap bracelet kit in a long time. It's kits are until you put a kit together, my dears, it's a, uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, this is 0.5 millimeter leather on the silk wrap here. We'll talk about that when we, um, uh, when we get to knots and stuff like that. It can be uh, a little persnickety, but when it works out, it really looks nice. Um, so this one was kind of Kate's favorite part two, where I did a double strand. So this is, I think that's 1.5 millimeter leather on the outside and one millimeter leather on the inside. You can watch this broadcast. I did a whole broadcast on it. This is knotted. I think I did just the regular flat macrame with this. Then I did some laddering here where this is all 0.5 millimeter. I think it goes two strand. I'm sorry, 1.5 millimeter. Two strands come from this one up here. And then I added um, another two strands. And so it's laddered and kind of woven, off loom woven all at the same time. Um, this has an eight dot seed bead and then the small, um, shadow bead. I really love this bracelet. Um, but again, you can do kind of multiple strands like that. And then see here how it transitions from these, these two strands of leather come down and do this strand. 
these two come down and do this strand here. And then they meet up here at the end with some macrame and that's it. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, this is, this was kind of a, a, an advanced one of this. Sometimes I wear them together. They're kind of fun, but again, all done with infinity. It would be too hard for me to get a strand from the left and a strand from the right and cross underneath the infinity stitch. Um, for me personally, it's just easier to stitch, um, these across like this. Okay. Again, like Drea's Highlander bracelets that she does, she has another Highlander, um, in the works that she's thinking about. Um, again, done with, um, infinity stitch. So they're kind of fun. Um, okay. Let's look at some more infinity ones. Let's look at the color study. I've got the color study. Uh, the color study is actually done with traditional laddering. So I'm going to put that aside for a second. Um, this one here, this is one, I think Janice, JP, did you do this one? This has infinity in it. See this one? Here, this is all with delicas. And see this pattern? Isn't it nice? This is done with infinity. Um, adult, and I can see that doubled strand going through the beads coming back out. This is really infinity, especially if I'm using seed beads like this, smaller seed beads, size eights. If I were to ever ladder with 15s, I probably should try it because, you know, this is the masterclass, so we better bust it out. Um, Infinity Stitch is what I'd use. Also, with um, bugles, laddering with bugles, Infinity Stitch um, was the way to go. Because, again, the hole is small. It would be hard to get one strand through this way and one strand through that way without a needle or whatever, right? So Infinity is the right one for this. Um, also with chain, laddering with chain, when we add this wheat chain in here, this is laddered with the infinity stitch back and forth. This little bit of herringbone laddering here, also done with infinity. I love, love, love this bracelet. When I was looking for projects when we were doing the, 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 um, photo for the, the slider for this um, for this series, I pulled out this bracelet, and I—I'll be honest—I had completely, I had completely forgotten about this. Look at how gorgeous it is! It's just a really great myriad of techniques in here, and the seed beads and the bugles—they look so great. Um, yeah, I think this is you, JP. I think this is yours. Um, the bugles, actually, I have not had any problem with the bugles, Linda, cutting the thread because <clears throat> the bugles are wedged really nice and tight in here and they don't move around or whatever. Okay, so it's it's a nice one. Um, let me show you. I have, um, where did it go? Here it is. Here's another one that's based on Janice's color study that I did. Um, I did this a while back also with infinity, also with a bunch of different beads. It's a little wavy gravy though. I'll, I'll show you. Um, it's, it's nice. I don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, but, um, I'll, I'll show you when I get to this thick part, it's, it's not as perfect as I'd want it to be. But can you see here, um, I just start and I'm using the cubes. These are our small cubes, the 1.8 millimeter cubes. Um, if you haven't tried laddering with cubes, I recommend it. They're so cool. Here's the 11 knots here. And then we keep going, I keep going. This again is just one long string of consciousness. More cubes here with the different colors. Tylas, and I go down, I go up and down with the sizes, regular Tylas, cubes, quarter Tylas here. This is the section that gave me a few fits. 
Can you see how wide this is? I think this looks, I'm don't get me wrong. I think this looks amazing. I love the way it looks. It's a little, um, it's the tension. It's like all of these beads, sometimes they don't quite match up. So there's a little lift here, like on this side, this one's fine. This lifts a little, that strand lifts. Not so much that you'd notice, but if this were in a um, a technical competition, I don't think it would win. But visually, I love this. I love the way the light and the dark go. I love it, love it, love it. And I think I made this one. I think I did. Um, and I love the way that it wraps. Look at this. Just look at it. <laughs> Let me wrap it. There we go. Look at how great that looks. Right? So pretty. I love it. Um, okay. Let me get another, um, another, I think this is, I think this is laddered and I think Emily might have made this one. Um, and I'm going to have to look at the project. This is when we had the, the those little uh, dragon scales. I think Emily might have done this. Um, I don't know if she did this on the loom. This might have just been laddering. But see how she put the the buttonhole in that one. It's a really cool piece. And this is one millimeter leather. I think that this might have been done on the loom. So it has a, a ladder kind of feel to it. Um, but I think this is loomed. It's gone back and forth this way. So it's kind of like infinity stitch on the loom and it goes back and forth this way. But what a cool design, right? And it shows that you can use beads that um, are have some, some height to them. See here, and we've shown this Hydria one. Um, this is with the Miyuki drops that Janice laddered with those. And I just love how they look like little, pretty little, um, just groups of, of beads. It looks very organic to me. Um, <clears throat> let me grab, I've got another, let me see, I thought it was sitting right here. Russell, Russell, I know you're hearing me rustle around here, but I think one might have fallen. Oh, here we go. Here it is. I wanted to show you also this one, Drea and I talked a little bit about this in the year end wrap. Remember when I did the laddering, this is also with infinity and I did this with the quarter tilas and that Bargello and see how this, you can see if I put that white piece of paper behind it, you can see that it's kind of an open weave um, pattern. This also has that closure with the, um, with the macrame over the top. And this is the Bargello wrap. I just did a single, uh, a single wrap. And you know, you don't have to, a wrap bracelet doesn't have to be an epic undertaking, right? You can do a single wrap. You could do a single wrap just simply with no fanfare. It'll look great. You can just do it like, like this with Tyla's or, you know, just do like a simple pattern. This is with the quarter tilas like this, or like this one that has the semi-precious beads in it like that, right? Just a simple, you don't have to, you know, do the whole nine yards on this. If you're a beginner with this kind of technique, then be a beginner. Relish in the fact that you're learning and start with something super simple and then work your way up to 
something crazy like this color study or whatever. Look at this one, this section right here. This is with Delicas and it's four beads across. And you could very simply just turn that into a single wrap. It would be beautiful. Okay. This one here, this, I really like this one. Janice did this one too. This is with the Tyla beads, right? Look at this, how cool this little section is. You could just take this little section. This is a quarter Tyla, or sorry, a half Tyla right here, a quarter Tyla and a quarter Tyla. See how that color shift just by flipping the pattern one way and then the other, you get this line going on one side, going on the other. What a cute, even like this with the plain tile of beads around it. That is just a gorgeous, simple pattern. Single wrap. Don't, don't make it hard on yourself. That little um, pattern is really charming. Janice also did this one, like the little bricks, right? You could do this little checkerboard like this. So uh, tiles are a lot of fun. We're going to delve into laddering with multi-hold beads, but um, it's super simple, right? Kim had a great observation here. You can take singles, button them together to make an interchangeable long wrap. 100% you could. It's a great idea. So you have little short ones that you can make into a long one. Um, and you can just kind of play around like Christine is saying, start simply, slowly expand your design prowess, add color, um, you know, as you go. Okay. So Ara, between the white beads, this is also a Tyla. It's a quarter Tyla right here. It's just, I'm not sure of the color. Um, but it's like a, an iris, but it's all the same. So you can really see how, you know, high contrast color with these beads really, um, really makes a design pop. Okay. Uh, let me show you, um, this is one last one. I'll show you here. This is the one like Drea did with her year end wrap. She started in the center. This is that morning song one that I did. Um, and it has a lot of different techniques, a lot of different techniques. But you can see here I did infinity stitch. Um, and I did the infinity stitch. I did kind of that same little pattern with the eight dots and the quarter tilas right here. Okay. So it really just depends. However you want to play around with it. If you see a wrap bracelet and you really hone in on, um, you know, just a little piece of the pattern, just make that your whole bracelet. Just do a single, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, let me show you some other threads that we've got going on here too, okay? Um, I've got some what we like to call the skinny threads. Let me, let me move this over to maybe a place where it's not quite hitting on. Uh, whoops. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Uh, where it's not quite so messy. Can I get it over there? There we go. Here's some threads. Here's KO, right? Here's Fireline. Here's Sono. The Sono and the KO are pretty much interchangeable. The Sono, they feel just slightly different, but they're almost the same. The KO might be a little flatter. The Sono might be a little rounder, right? But they're really interchangeable. We grabbed the Sono because um, we liked the color uh, of this, of the Sono. They're both Tex 330. They're both nylon. They're both made in Japan. Um, it's a very similar thread, okay? 
So that's these there. Now here's Fireline. Uh, Fireline I use sometimes when I'm doing seed bead work. And this Fireline, can you see the difference between the Fireline and this KO right here? It's a little thinner. Can you see that right there? Um, I like the fire line a lot, and sometimes I ladder with fire line. Not a lot, but sometimes I do. If you have really small beads, like sharp, small beads, someone mentioned crystals earlier. Um, fire line would be great to ladder with crystals. I would double it over and I would use it uh, infinity stitch and doubled. Uh, if you're doing something small like these semi-precious, laddering with fire line will work. Um, Alice, these are all, uh, even alleys, they're all on the website. You kind of have to drill down into all of the um, different, um, different styles, but they're all in there. Um, we'll try and link, uh, when we do the linking and Ellen, I'm talking to you right now. Uh, hopefully we can link some of these, uh, and the, the bracelets, um, that I showed in the comments post show. Okay. Or in the description post show. So you can see it. Okay. <clears throat> but most of these threads, these skinny threads here, I would double most of these. Okay. Uh, just because they're skinny threads, I would double them. Um, you could also ladder with things like 0.5 millimeter leather. You really have to check your leather though, right? Now we're getting into non-traditional things. You could ladder with Chinese knotting cord if your holes are large enough. Like let's say that you were going to make a ladder bracelet with maybe just roller beads or with just chain, right? You'd need something that is big, right? We're going to also talk about laddering with large hold beads in another, um, in, in another broadcast. You could also use, um, hemp, hemp cord, wax linen, all of those things. I urge you, just like when I teach my metal smithing classes, I tell you to just make little samplers with your metal. Same thing for this stuff, right? Make a little sampler um, so you can see uh, what will work, what won't work. Um, I want to show you this piece. Keep looking at that thread. Let me grab, hopefully this piece is over here. Maybe, maybe it isn't. No, here it is. I want to show you a sneak peek what I'm doing for the Great Beat Extravaganza. You've seen me kind of ladder with, um, with leather before, so I'll show you these two. But this will illustrate the point with leather. Um, this one is the Explorer bracelet that I did right? So instead of two pieces of round leather like this, I used flat leather and I laddered this chain in between. Coming up for the Great Beat Extravaganza, I've got kits for you, but I wanted to show you how even I do little samplers, right? This is a little one where I'm perfecting the design here and we're laddering with um, with leather cord here. So the, uh, making little samplers to test out your beads, especially when you're not quite sure how it's all going to work. This is where the magic happens right here. There's a question. Oh, and thank you, Ellen. I knew you'd be watching. She'll link all the samples and everything within the time stamping. So she'll get that done by next week. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me, here's another question here. Beeswax or thread heaven? Um, that's a great question. You know, thread heaven, um, is not really made 
anymore. Thread Heaven went out of business. It's been a while now. It's been out of business. Thread Heaven, for those of you who don't know, it's a thread conditioner. Kind of like a, might be silicone based. I'm not real sure what the, what the um, material was. Uh, for many, many years, uh, Thread Heaven was kind of the standard to um, condition your thread with. I can't believe I can't find my beeswax. It was sitting here just like a second ago. So bear, bear with me here while I'm rustling around. My resolution for uh, 2024 was to be a little more prepared, but you know, why change my spots now? Uh, hang on, let me see. Here's, here it is. Um, here's my beeswax. When I wax, though you can find thread conditioners like in, um, like at your big box sewing stores and stuff like that. Beeswax, I think, is the way to go. And let me show you how the waxing works on some of these different threads, just so you can see it. Um, let me cut away this. Uh, let me cut a piece of thread right here. Here's the Sono right here. I will typically wax my thread after I have strung the needle. So let's just pretend that this is strung on a needle. The whole point of me waxing thread is to kind of tame the buoyancy of the thread, have it be just a little stickier, right? So that the doubled strand of thread acts like a single strand. And can you see how even just waxing that, it's kind of, can you hear that? That little squeak with the with the wax on there. So it definitely themes. You can see that one's waxed. That one's not. See how this is curly, right? You can wax a fire line. Here's the, let me see. I'm scrolling down, scrolling down just to make sure. Um, here's the, the fire line. You can also wax the fire line. Fire line has a little bit of a different feel to it. But see, it really, waxing, you can see, it's so hard to see it, but waxing definitely, definitely stiffens it, helps you manage that thread a little bit more. Let me wax a piece of the regular Ceylon, just so you can see it. I rarely wax the regular Ceylon. I might, maybe, I don't know, if I felt like I needed to strengthen the thread or straighten the thread out a little bit. But you can see, you can hear that. I don't know, you can't, there we go, that little bit of a squeak there. But again, can you see? Here's the waxed side and here's the unwaxed side. <laughs> Um, I think really a lot of it is personal preference. You can also use for the Ceylon, I have this little tiny straightening iron. This is a tip that we got from our buddy Alice Howe at one of the, um, uh, at one of the bead retreats. You can iron, this obviously is not on because I'm touching it uh, so closely, but you can use these little straightening irons to straighten out your cord like that too, like ironing it, right? Um, so yeah, you could use beeswax. You can see I've waxed fireline because there's some fireline residue on here. Um, but you can do it. You can do it with Ceylon, um, you know, whatever. Whatever cords or threads you're using, you could, um, you could do it that way, okay? And yeah, that's exactly right, Mary. I usually wax it when it's needled. Um, I hold the needle actually exactly and I pull it through the beeswax. It makes it a little bit easier. And then it's done and I'm and I'm ready to go. Uh, 
for the edges or the sides of the wrap bracelets, we usually use uh, leather. And I've got 0.5, 1 mil, 1.5 millimeter, and 2 millimeter. This is the Indian leather. We also carry the 1.5 millimeter in Greek leather. I had my bag of Greek leather here just a second ago. Hang on, it's right here. The Greek leather and the Indian leather are a little different. This is that Greek leather. I use the Greek leather on my project, on my year-end wrap project. This is the garnet color. A little smoother, and there's, um, you know, it's painted. Um, the quality of this leather is gorgeous. Uh, it comes in a five-meter package the way that we sell it. So don't forget, my friends, to explore the world of <clears throat> the Greek leather as well. Here's the 1.5 millimeter. And so I ordered myself some so I can, I can utilize some of this. But this is the Indian leather that we carry again, 5, 1.5, 1 millimeter, 1.5, and 2 millimeter. And you can use these interchangeably. I'm going to take out the 0.5 because 0.5 might be a little small to ladder with, unless maybe I would ladder with the 0.5 and 15s. I don't know. I'm going to have to try that out because, again, masterclass, we've got to figure that out. But these guys here, one, one and a half, and two, these all work interchangeably, but it just depends on the size of leather that you want. This Kate's favorite that I had here, again, this is a huge pile of mess. Let me let me be super real and show you my pile of messiness over here. Uh, the Kate's favorite, where, wherever it went, um, I used, here it is. I used the two millimeter with that because I wanted it to be a little bit heavier, right? So uh, good question, Stephanie. The quality, it's, the quality is different. Um, it is smoother. The finishes, the finish is really um, clean. There's no knots or splices, though when we sell it to you, we examine it and make sure that you don't get a knot or a splice right? So it is, it's super slick. Uh, the leather quality is a really high quality beauty. So, um, it's a, it's a little more elevated, I guess is what I might say, but both, um, exquisite leather leathers, uh, to work with. Um, the other thing before, uh, we sign off for today, let me just double check and make sure I've gone over everything. Let me flash this back on the screen. Whoops, sorry, let me take that. Let me take that comment off. There we go. Uh, traditional versus affinity. We talked about that. We talked about threads. We talked about doubling threads. We talked mostly about uh, some threads with which technique. We're going to get into more of that when we do our episodes on just ladder, traditional laddering, and just uh, infinity. Um, and we talked a little bit about hemp and wax linen and leather. So good. I think we're good there. Uh, let me look for any more questions um, that we got, we've got. we got here. Um, I also wanted to show you uh, just real quick a variety of the needles. And again, we'll delve into this when we do a few, uh, the the deep dive into the infinity versus traditional laddering. As you know, if you've watched me do the infinity stitch for a while, you know that the size 10 sharps are kind of my um, go-to for, uh, for the ladder bracelets. I like the sharps because they're short. And I was trained as a little girl. I did a lot of embroidery and stitching and stuff like this. So this sharps is a needle that I'm familiar with that I'm really at ease with. It's short. Like when Emily does her seed bead work, she doesn't use a sharp. She uses a more traditional beading needle, which is longer. I know a lot of you like that longer needle. More power to you. 
right? That long needle, I think some people, this is the size 12 needle right here. Again, Emily's needle of choice a lot of times. This size 12, you can see it's a little longer in my hands. Like if I'm doing looming bead, uh, bead, uh, bead weaving on a loom, um, a longer needle I think is good. Um, if you're doing, again, something wider, like with this, I'm sure I used a beading needle here, right? Because if I show my needle here across this, it's not much longer than the width of this piece. So it might be a little bit easier for me to utilize a longer needle. Again, um, if you're doing infinity stitch and maybe your, um, bead holes are a little smaller, can you see the difference? The size 10 is on this top, the size 12 is on the bottom. Might be a little bit easier for you to get your needle through if you're using a size 12 and the size 12 will work with this KO with no problem. Okay. So the longer needles do bend, but it also, we, we sell these, um, uh, these English beading needles. So these English beading needles have a lot of, um, uh, flexibility to them. Okay. You want to, and sometimes you snap a needle, you just do that happens, but these English needles have a lot of buoyancy to them. So, um, if you're not too rough on them or trying to bend them a whole lot, um, they'll work okay. Once in a while for laddering, not often, but sometimes. <clears throat> if I'm doing traditional laddering, I'll use a heavier wire, twisted wire needle. Can you see that? It's hard to see on this. Let me get the white background so you can see it a little bit better. Especially if I needed a needle to get through beads that have larger holes, I might do this right? I might use that. Um, I also might use sometimes the collapsible eye needles versus the flexible eye. I might use that, right? The difference between the flexible eye is the round eye that flexes down. The collapsible eye has that little twist. Can you see that at the end? That holds your thread in it. This is also one, the big eye beading needle. I use this sometimes when I ladder. The big eye I think is handy. I'm gonna open this up and take one of these out so you can see it. Again, for beads with large holes, and just a reminder, that big eye needle is split down the center. Okay. You want to be careful. You don't want to use this in too tight of a situation because it can, this interior right here can either a break or split your threads. So that, that would work. Uh, Christine Whitney is saying she uses dental threaders. You can use those too. Kind of the same idea as these metal needles here. Sometimes I want the stiffness of this metal needle, um, but that would work as well. So there's a little um, 411 on the needles there. You can also consult our Needlepedia. Other things you're going to need for your journey, we'll use them a little further down the line. You'll see me use not only this GS Hypo Cement, we'll also use this Zap Jewelry Gel, and I'll be using these later on in this series. I'll also be using our thread burner, our Perfect End Thread Burner. You'll see me do that. And of course, my either my Zuron Thread Scissors, which are in the other room, or my thread, my old school thread snips, right, uh, for cutting your thread. Uh, Becky's saying, and I want to make sure that you folks know, this big eye needle, she learned the hard way that this big eye is sharp on this end and this end. That's correct. It uh, is pointy and sharp on both ends. So be, be careful. Um, be careful about that. Okay. Um, 
our tulip brand, uh, the, the tulip needles, those are great. Um, those are a, a beautiful, uh, uh, very high quality Japanese seed bead needle, also good, uh, that we carry. So, uh, people find their own favorites, right? Just because the size 10 sharp is my favorite, you may have a different favorite to work with. There are no wrong answers here. Um, you're also going to need some clampers, some clamps like this. Um, and you'll, we're going to, uh, talk about adding your project to a board and stuff. We'll do that uh, next time when we uh, tackle uh, the the laddering. Let me tell you what our next series, uh, I have it all mapped out here. So next time on the uh, 7th of February, uh, which will be the episode two, we're going to do traditional ladder, laddering. So we're going to do all of that traditional laddering with beads and single hole, double hole, large hole with chain, how to add thread, etc. cetera. So the next, um, the next episode is going to be traditional laddering. Let me get myself up here. Uh, traditional laddering on the 7th of February. Then we'll go into the infinity uh, laddering technique that's on the 6th of March. Then on April, um, let me just put, whoops, let me put this back here. Then in April, the April broadcast is going to be on the 3rd of April, 2024. Um, we're going to talk about doing wide cuffs, doing things with lots and lots of wraps, um, transition points and lining those up versus just doing a ladder with no transition. Then in May, May's episode is going to all be about closures. We're going to do the alley splice, starting from a loop rather from the button, leather ends and alternate clasps, the trails end loop, uh, this macrame closure loop. And then uh, we're going to skip the beginning of June because I'm going to be on the France retreat where the last one is going to be on the 26th of June. We're going to transition laddering into other techniques such as macrame, leather. We're going to look at doing it in other things besides bracelets, maybe earrings and necklaces. Mega laddering like a huge super duo cuff like um, I had it sitting here a second ago. There it is. The super duo cuff like this, um, Andrea's Highland cuff. Okay. So that's, that's what's coming up on the future episodes. So as I said, my friends, um, thank you all so, so much for joining me today. You can find everything, um, on laddering over, uh, on our, uh, bead shop website, www.beadshop.com. Dot com. Let me put up my, this banner here. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, this one here, there it is. Uh, right here, right over on beadshop.com. If you have questions, shoot us an email, uh, stay in touch with our newsletter. So you'll know, uh, when we've got the masterclass coming up, it's the first Wednesday of every month, uh, with the exception of June. June's broadcast is going to be on the 26th. So that one that's in um, May, that's going to be the first. The first of May is going to be the closures. Okay. So my friends, oof, that's what we've got. Whoops. There we go. Come off there. Episode one, the first one. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and Janice, thank you for reminding me. I am doing another show today, my friends. I'm going on uh, in a little bit. I think it's at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific. I'm going to be on the Softlex channel. We're going to be doing, Sarah from Softlex sent me a uh, a mystery box, which is sitting right over there. I haven't even opened it yet. So uh, I'll be back later today uh, on the Softlex channels. Uh, we'll put up some, uh, links and stuff so you folks can watch it. But if you jump over to Softlex, you'll see it there. Um, you'll also see it on their, their YouTube. You can rewatch all of these, uh, Gail, my friend, you can rewatch all of these, 
uh, over best place is over on our YouTube channel. We'll make a playlist for this. But if you jump over to our YouTube channel at beachshop.com, there's years and years and years of content, but you'll be able to rewatch this. You can rewatch our last masterclass, all of that. So it's all on there forever, free, watch and watch, rewatch. I'll be stoked to hear what you folks think. So I will be back on Friday for free tip Friday. I've got something special for you coming up that day. Something that you might want to utilize. My desk is so messy. I had them here to tease you with, but you're just going to have to wait till the newsletter. I've got some little, gem oh, right here. Some little gem mixes that I think you, think you folks are going to like. They'll be great for a wrap bracelet. We're going to launch those on free tip Friday. We've got the great, great beat extravaganza coming up next weekend. Oh my gosh, we're hitting 2024 running. So get that newsletter uh, in your inbox, sign up for our newsletter so you keep in touch so we know what's going on. Jump over to beadshop.com and do that. Thank you, my dears. We really, really appreciate it. Going into 2024, we are going to try and uh, be as creative refresh, renew, keep that motivation going. And we really, really appreciate all of you folks being here for us because without you, our small business would definitely not exist. Thanks so much, everybody. First broadcast of 2024. I think it was an epic one. I'll see you on Friday. Thanks so much, all. Bye-bye.